Hi, this is John V6EY with a short video about spectrum that you receive from power system interference. So a little while ago I was watching the output of my receiver on a uh, spectrum analyzer and this is taking the audio output from 12 megahertz or 11 and a half and feeding it into a spectrum analyzer so you can see the 120 hertz uh, and harmonic um, interference signature from the switch mode power supply that causes me so much trouble and as you do diversity reception you can make this disappear and it's actually pretty amazing uh, how fast and how far down you can get the interference with diversity receiving and while I was watching this spectrum I found myself thinking how does a little signal from 120 Hertz way down at the bottom of the spectrum managed to work its way across all of HF and up into VHF and uh, yeah I can get rid of it with a diversity reception but you know where does it come from how does it how does it just take over and uh, and make things crazy on my uh, on my receiver so I thought okay I'll do a bit of digging and the result is this presentation about power system interference spectrum and I hope you enjoy it so three questions we're going to set out to answer today. Question one, did you ever wonder how small noise spikes from your power supply can cover all of HF? So that's question one. Question two, why is a power system interference spectrum dominated by a 120 hertz signature? Where does that come from? I think most of you already know the answer to that one, but we'll go through it anyway. And finally, why is your radio's noise blanker so completely ineffective on switched mode power supply interference. It might work well on ignition noise and plain uh, power, uh, power line noise, but it just doesn't do much for switched mode power supply RFI. So let's answer these three questions. So I've got some pretty sophisticated tools in my shack for reducing broadband RFI, and these include the outboard noise cancelers like the ANC4, which I can use with noise probes to knock down the noise before it gets to the receiver, or inboard diversity reception with multiple antennas, which I use all the time and just demonstrated a moment ago. But how does that noise get from 120 hertz all the way up to 12 or 30 or 50 or 100 megahertz? Good question. And so maybe you, you can begin to answer that by just asking yourself, if you wanted to create broadband RFI in your neighborhood, how would you go about it? Well, the easiest way would be to generate a narrow impulse, a narrow pulse, short duration with very steep on and off switching. And if you look into the theory, an ideal impulse, which has actually no width and infinite uh, amplitude, has a frequency domain characteristic that it contains a signal of all frequencies in equal amounts. So a very narrow impulse uh, in the time domain creates a very wide band spectrum of interference or noise or signal in the frequency domain. So that's, that's the theory. Now ideal impulses don't actually exist, but you can create near ideal impulses with very fast rise and fall times which come close. And as you can see in this diagram, if you have a very narrow impulse, it will generate uh, frequencies across the spectrum that will, in most cases, diminish over time, or in some cases, raise over time. And there's a formula from which you can sort of figure out what is the instantaneous bandwidth of a narrow pulse. So if your narrow pulse is around 2 milliseconds, its instantaneous bandwidth is about 500 hertz or greater. If your pulse duration is around 2 microseconds, then you're going to get a 500 kilohertz bandwidth of interference. And finally, if your pulse duration is around 2 nanoseconds, which is really small, uh, it's going to give you uh, instantaneous bandwidth of signal, or in this case interference, well over 500 megahertz. And that's just basically how impulses work and create RFI. So what creates impulses? Well, there's a whole bunch that you're familiar with. One is the automobile ignition. 
That creates uh, a duration of about one millisecond of pulse each time a spark plug fires. So that's a very um, relatively slow pulse and it's very easy to blank out with a noise blanker. Lightning strokes uh, give you a much faster pulse in the range of 60 to 70 microseconds. Keep in mind a microsecond is 10 to the minus 6. Uh, so it's, it's pretty, f pretty short duration and a nanosecond is 10 to the minus 9th. Powerline hardware Corona Discharge gives you pulses of about 20 to 50 nanoseconds. Hardware spark gaps, like the source of much power line noise, have impulses of about a uh, duration of 2 to 5 nanoseconds. Switching components and power supplies, they can be relatively uh, uh, slow, like 2 microseconds uh, for rectifiers, or relatively fast, like 2 nanoseconds for a switching MOSFET. And other tools like uh, <coughs> motorized tools will create impulses. And of course, the old ham radio spark transmitter, which really started this whole thing off around 100 years ago. So th uh, those are sources of impulses. The spectrum you get from a really fast impulse, like a sparking noise from a transformer uh, or uh, power line hardware, which as I mentioned is down around 2 to 5 nanoseconds, can give you a strong magnitude broadband interference that stretches all the way up to one gigahertz, as you can see in this uh, in this graph. So these tiny little pulses uh, at low frequencies can give you all kinds of noise across the entire spectrum, uh, even up into into light. Where does the 120 hertz come from? Well, generally, these sparks or impulses or rapid switching transients impress themselves on the pure sine wave, which for us in North America, for our power systems, is 60 hertz. Uh, in other parts of the world, it's 50 hertz. And generally, you get these impulses triggered at the peak and uh, valley of an AC sine wave. So twice per cycle, and that's where the 120 hertz signature comes from. It comes from the power line frequency uh, that triggers sparks when it's a high positive or high negative voltage. In addition, switch mode power supplies have DC to DC switching as well as AC to DC switching in the range of 50 kilohertz to 1 megahertz. This is done generally by a free running oscillator in the power supply. And these impulses caused by switching circuits also arrive on those frequencies as well. So combined with the basic 120 hertz and the higher frequency switching oscillators of the power supplies, you can get a very complex signature coming out of the uh, noise. So here's the impulse rain, uh, chain shown on the sound card oscilloscope from that interference I showed you in the video at the beginning. The interference is an impulse train st starting every 8.3 milliseconds, or 120 hertz. And I've got the uh, roughly 120 hertz, uh, or 8.3 milliseconds, marked out on, on the oscilloscope. In the case of my neighbor's noise, each burst runs about 5 milliseconds and contains 20 or 30 or more smaller impulses. And each impulse seems to be, I don't know, the best I can measure it is less than 100 microseconds. It could even be faster. And each train is slightly different. So that's what the noise coming from my neighbor's overdriven switch mode power supply and halogen light system looks like <coughs> on an oscilloscope. And this is basically on 12 megahertz using AM demodulation and a 7 kilohertz bandwidth. So that's what it, what it looks like. With diversity reception, in other words, two channels that I'm phasing against each other, I can actually get very easily 20 up to 40 dB of cancellation by just getting these impulse trains out of phase and get them to cancel each other. And so the, here's the same interference, and diversity reception is giving me around 20 or more dB of, of reduction to the voltage of that signal coming in. I can also use the external noise canceller that we talked about before, like the ANC4 or the X phase, and uh, I'm getting at least 12 dB of reduction. 
before and after you can see here with the uh, with the external so that's an example of what I do to knock down noise from switch mode power supplies it's still there it never goes away but it can get quite low so why don't noise blankers work since we're just dealing with impulse noise well noise blankers work well when you have short duration high amplitude low repetition rate impulses and the examples are ignition noise and power line arcing but it turns out the switch mode power supply noise is much more complex more high repetition and fairly long duration so by the, by the time your noise blanker knocks down the noise as you can see here in this picture uh, there's no signal left to listen to uh, it's just it's just taking everything out so if you ever try to get rid of switch mode power supply by lowering the threshold and fiddling around with your SDR noise blanker you're going to end up with noise reduction but it's also going to destroy the signal that you're trying to listen to so let's ask ourselves why why does a noise blanker work on 120 hertz uh, simple Im impulses but not on more complex noise so I, I hooked up my signal generator to the receiver and I created basically a train of hundred of Im impulses short impulses at 120 Hertz and you can see that at the top of this diagram and even though I've got running my signal generator running at 120 Hertz I'm picking up that same noise throughout the entire HF spectrum and my noise blanker can very easily get rid of that noise uh, by more than 20 dB as you can see in the bottom here so <coughs> uh, it's a very simple impulse though you're what you're seeing is really one spike every 8.3 milliseconds a little bit of transient decay afterwards but basically it's a very simple thing to take it out and you can blank for you know 500 microseconds but you've still got seven seven thousand five hundred microseconds of signal left that you can do something with which isn't the case with switch mode power supply if you look at simple 120 hertz impulses on a spectrum uh, on a FFT here you can see at the top there's those repeating 120 hertz and harmonics of interference and I turn the noise blanker on and they get knocked down by over 30 dB as you can see on the bottom so this kind of explains <coughs> why things work well with noise blankers on simple impulses that you can sometimes get from power line noise or much slower pulses coming off uh, ignition systems but it just it's too complex to do much with uh, switch mode power supply here's a comparison of the two at the top of this screen you can see uh, a simple impulse response and at the bottom you can see what you get from a switch mode power supply which has many more peaks and valleys and irregularities and multiple high amplitude spikes rather than just one uh, occurring every 120 hertz or more often in the case of the free running oscillator so there you go I'd summarize the question uh, did you ever wonder how small noise spikes from your power supply can cover all of HF well fast switching currents caused by power system spark gaps and switch mode power supplies create impulses impulses of a broad frequency spectrum and the train of impulses leaks back into the mains which radiates broad spectrum RFI in your home or between neighbors or in the case of power lines it can reach for miles so that's that's where they come from why is it dominated by the 120 Hertz signature well switching impulses are generated twice per mains cycle which is 120 Hertz for most of us in North America 100 Hertz in Europe and elsewhere Additional spikes are created by fast MOSFET or other switching devices in power supplies at a free running oscillator frequency, which is typically at least 50 kilohertz or 1 megahertz. These also get radiated by house wiring, and the impulses are in the nanosecond range with an instantaneous bandwidth exceeding 100 megahertz. Why is the noise blanker so ineffective? Well, unlike most power line noise, impulse, impulse trains uh, from switch mode power supplies are just more complex, and there's a lot more peaks of the impulses in the time domain, which leads you to more complex frequency domain noise. 
uh, SMPS RFI has longer duration interference and higher repetition rates than most noise blankers can handle. So there's my video on power system interference spectrum. I hope you found it useful. And good luck fighting RFI wherever you are. Thanks. This is John V6EI, making it up.